This is all theater. This is all just political theater. Political theater. Political theater. Pure political theater. Theater. Political theater. The nefarious, significant, and protracted political, political, political theater for political theater's sake. I yield back. From Washington, this is Political Theater. Roll Call's review of the spectacle of politics on Capitol Hill and across the country. I'm Jason Day. All good things come to an end. Even the tenure of Roll Call Politics editor Herb Jackson, who is wrapping up his time here at Roll Call, and he's going to do that. On this podcast, he's got a couple more days uh, before he officially leaves uh, for for something pastures. I won't call them greener uh, at this point, but we're going to talk a little bit about his time here, uh, about, uh, as as he would state, congressional granularity, leadership pack names, FEC data, and various wing doodles and fart licks. Herb. Welcome back for maybe not the last time. You never know about these things, but like your last time as a roll call politics editor in this form. There is internet in other offices. There is? Wait, so. what? Like, is this? I, yes, I to... You can tell by our newsroom, there's nobody here. So they're, <laughs> they're on the internet somewhere, but you know. Yeah, oh, wait, like, there's liter- Paul. Yeah, literally, Paul Fontella <laughs> just walked by you. So, like, even you, you know, can't, uh, and and by the way, the uh, for, for those who are are watching on YouTube, and you're not seeing the familiar background for Herb, which is the you know he he likes that halo above him, the the big light halo above him because he's so angelic. But uh, there, we have so many people in the newsroom now that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we we you know we had to improvise. So now he's in the lair of the tracker, the lair of the CQ budget tracker, David Lerman. Uh, we didn't ask uh, the tracker permission, but the tracker is generous uh, when you feed him on time. So uh, tracker, we hope that it's okay that Herb is is taking over the the budget <laughs> podcast lair uh, in the meantime. <laughs> he didn't come in today, so it's its own problem. There we go. There's I mean there's a there's a CR the, to go down in flames uh, to cover. So. Well, Herb, uh, I've, I've uh, been dreading uh, saying goodbye to you uh, ever, ever since that you announced that uh, you were uh, heading to another position uh, across the river, as it were. We'll let people figure that out on their own uh, about which part of the uh, uh, Northern Virginia newsrooms you're, you're headed to. But I... Uh, Earlier today, I was uh, covering an event with uh, some some uh, staffers of the late Bill Pascrell and uh, a Democrat of New Jersey who, who just died uh, earlier this summer, and uh, they were they were still talking about the fact of, of how uh, traumatized they were when you left the New Jersey beat, when you left you know your time as as a New Jersey correspondent to come to. Uh, to CQ roll call, and I've got to say that I know the feeling now. Uh, losing you is going is a huge blow, but we're going to talk about some of your uh, favorite memories, uh, uh, like uh, w- covering politics and and you know everything else that came down the pike. But uh, it's been a it's been a real pleasure working with you these these last several years. And again, I know uh, th- th- they said it in more colorful terms than I'm saying it, as you can imagine, uh, hey. for uh, Pascal's folks. <laughs> Well, he was he was a lot of fun to cover. I mean, he once got some like knighthood from the Italian government, and he had this big party up at the Italian ambassador's house. They had this busload of guys come down from Patterson, and he's like, "Hey, that's Tony and Vinnie the Barber's here," you know. And it was it was just it was this odd, tranquil building that juts out onto Rock Creek Park, you know, and a bunch of guys from Patterson, you know. I was like. <laughs> I was like, I felt very at home, you know. I, I mean, the thing that is is the connective tissue there too is that like the thing that I I noticed about you right off the bat, and this was dating back to the time even when you were covering transportation before you became the politics editor, was that you really you you revel in these in these moments, you know, the these like sort of like strange moments like that, or or just fun moments, or or just like looking for the moments of sublimity or ab- absurdity, uh, as as it were, and uh, you know, you, and you, you seem to really enjoy, you know, just these sort of human moments and stories, and that that also reminded me of Pasquale because he seemed to be somebody who just like dug into the moment uh, it, it, at any given time. I mean, well, I I remember covering him. Uh, when they uh, were doing a, an, an exhibit, they were covering. They were doing something about an exhibit on uh, the Negro Leagues in baseball, 
at the African American Museum. And he got up and started talking about, you know, he was a former semi-pro baseball player, right? And he started talking about when he was first in Little League, he, he, they tried him as a pitcher and he hit the first three batters. <laughs> and the coach came out and said, you're going to first base because you're going to kill somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just remembering like, that's a very Pascrell seed, you know, like he's in Little League and he's throwing at kids' heads. <laughs> Keeping it high and tight. Yeah. So let, let's, um, the, I think the, you know, one of the jokes that we've sort of had, you know, reoccurring on this podcast and, and also in the newsroom is just that there's always a Jersey connection. Um, uh, absolutely. And, uh, and, but, but there's more to, more to your job than just covering uh, New Jersey, the, the New Jersey part of the political equation. Wow. But I think that we'd be remiss if we didn't say that the, uh, you know, you outlasted Bob Menendez in this in the New Jersey political realm, uh, it, it, at least as far as covering politics. Menendez so is far. gone so far. So far. The senator <laughs> has not been sentenced yet, and there's always an appeal. Uh, but but he's not in Congress anymore. Uh, so he is not. Yeah. So like, um, but I mean, when when all this stuff started happening, I mean, like, I I just I've you know Menendez. I remember the first time that Menendez got indicted. In in was it 2015 or 16? I forget. I think it's 2015. Yeah, maybe. And That's I just I'm glad like that. I remember yeah. being in in the gallery, uh, and on the Senate side of the gallery, and there were there were some people who knew a lot about politics and a lot about New Jersey politics, and one of them said, you know, well, regardless of how it turns out, this is like you know Bob Menendez's last time, you know, this will be his last year in the Senate or something like that, and. <laughs> He outlasted it. I mean, he, he, you know, he benefited from a, um, you know, it was a hung jury, right? In, in, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. well, it was funny because, you know, I, I was, I was talking to another podcaster, your friend, Paul Singer, mm -hmm. uh, when I was still in the Gannett Bureau. And I, he's like, well, he'll either be convicted or acquitted. I said, well, no, <laughs> there's a third option. And right. he goes, well, that's like saying like the, the coin will end on its edge. And I was like, well, no, because he just needs to convince two or three people not to convict him. Now, as we have learned from reporter interviews with the jurors since then, it was actually, I think, 10 or 11 of them were going to acquit and only two were not. And, you know, but yeah, he was, a, he was, the, the, the jury was hung. And then the judge dismissed several of the worst, most serious charges saying the government didn't prove its case. So the Justice Department eventually dropped the other charges. Yeah. Then the just then the ethics committee admonished him, and that was in the spring of when he was running for reelection. Yeah, in so his eighteen, yeah, <laughs> his Republican opponent was saying, "See, the Senate said he did it." And the funny thing was, you know, Chris Coons, who was chairman of the Senator Chris Coons, who was chairman of the ethics committee, would never comment on it. But I said to him, I said, "You know, his opponent is saying you." The committee said he was guilty. And he goes, well, that's not what we said. I said, will you say that on the record? He goes, I just said that. <laughs> you know? But then he wouldn't say anything else, you know, so. It's very careful about these things. I mean, it, it, t being ethics chair or ranking member is a uh, incredibly thankless job in either chamber, for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, it just seems like this the saga, you know, like that people thought would be over in, you know, in short order you know, more than eight, eight, nine years ago has just now concluded. And as you said, it's, it's not over yet. He's going to appeal, you know, um, it, it, it's very it, difficult it, to make charges of political corruption stick the way the Supreme court has written the law. But one thing that we do know is that he is not in, not, not in the Senate anymore and he will not be, uh, you know, he will not be winning election at least this November. Um, Correct. Th there will be a new uh, senator, and as you, uh, as we said, right as we were coming into the podcast, we are now in the George Helmy era uh, of New Jersey politics. However, well, short that may last, because he is the replacement senator, and uh, they will get a new elected senator in in November, and then the Helmy era will end. <laughs> Presumably, yes. Think you know. I mean, Possibly. technically, Helmy's term runs through January now, but he's the governor has said he will resign. Right. Uh, so you can get the the new senator some seniority. Um, 
So, but let's talk, you know, a, a bit beyond beyond the jersey of it all. And there, you know, and not to exclude any of the the jersey uh, stuff, but um, let's talk about some of the you know the work you did, you know, because you had this pretty expansive portfolio, um, and you know, as as anybody who has worked at uh, CQ or Roll Call or both uh, knows, uh, this is a fairly unique place. What, what are some of the what are some of the things that you really kind of dug about working here, and and what kind of stories really kind of got you going uh, that that were kind of you know maybe you had some experience in working you know obviously you obviously worked with FEC data before uh but the you know what are some of the things that you might miss even a little bit uh and some of your favorite things that you worked on while you were here well first i have to say the the team here is great i love every i love the people i worked with you know we were all trying to pull in the same direction you know you i've worked in a couple of newsrooms in my life where people are there's, there's people out to try and stab each other in the back. You just don't have that here, you know. Um, but, you know, the, the funny thing is having come in as somebody who was in Washington just focused on one state and one state's issues, to suddenly deal with all the states and start dealing with, again, all these seats, you know. First, we had the 22 cycle where just after redistricting, everybody was being put in different districts or quitting or, you know. Then this cycle, we had we had lots of people wanting to run for other office. So, you know, there's about 50 seats that are going to change, even if nobody, no incumbents lose, right? So it's a matter of who's running, who are these people. One of the things I enjoyed a lot was diving into the bios of some of these people, like you'd get seven people running for an open Republican seat in a Republican district, you know. And one guy's bio, if you just read through it, it was like, he doesn't have a job and he thinks congressman would be a good job. You know, <laughs> I, like I had this business and then I moved back to my parents' house and, you know, and, and you know, Congress pays $145,000. So, you know, that sounds like a good job. I'll run yeah. for Congress. You yeah. Know? Why not? Beats uh, being a jacuzzi salesman or something, right? You know. Yeah. <laughs> I've, you know, and, and it's, it's interesting that we, you know, occasionally those people win a primary, you know, or occasionally those people win a primary in a seat that nobody thinks the party has a chance in, and then something happens to the shoe-in candidate, and who knows what gets in there. I mean, there was a thing that one of my one of our colleagues shared with me today. You know, there's a congressman, the longest-serving congressman back to New Jersey, the longest-serving congressman from New Jersey is Chris Smith. Um, he was elected in an, an accidental election, essentially that. He was running as the, the the Republican sacrificial lamb against a guy named Frank Thompson, who was a committee chair in a very Democratic district that was basically centered around Trenton, one of the biggest cities in the state. And Thompson got convicted in abscam and Smith won. And everybody said, well, he's only going to be there for two years. And it's now 2024. And they've actually redrawn the district several times so that it's not even near Trenton. They just kept moving <laughs> all the Democrats out because Smith kept winning even when they had Democrats in there. So they moved the Democrats somewhere and him over here so that he would be with Republicans and they were going to re- lose that seat anyway. So, you know, for, for a while there, Chris Smith was the only Republican in the delegation after the 22 election. It was 11 to 1. Right. You know, until Jeff Andrews switched parties because he didn't want to indict, uh, impeach Trump, you know. Um, so it was like New Jersey's not an 11 to 1 state. You know, it's just not. It's very Democratic, but it's not 11 to 1. But, you know, like the bios of these people, you know, and, and how accidental people get in here and move up or or move. You know, I wouldn't say that Chris Smith has ever been in power, but he's he's a base of operations. He was the, the head of New Jersey for life. He's still, you know, very active in that issue. Uh, and you know, it's, it, it's their time now, you know, so he's, 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 he's having a moment. 20, it was after the 2018 yeah. in terms that that's when it was, when it was all, all Dems and Smith, right? Because. Uh, Drew, yeah. 18. Yeah. You're yeah, right. It yeah, was, yeah. A, it was a Trump. Yeah. yeah re- reverb back. Yeah. It, it, I mean, again, time is a flat circle. I, I, lot, I'm the, really bad that way. I have yeah. to look them all up and. As the copy editor, as one of my colleagues here just earlier told me that when I'm gone, there will be no more corrections. Uh, so <laughs> I, I do sometimes slip on those things. 
Um, I, I think that uh, my guess is that there will be corrections, uh, maybe even coming from me now, now that I've been uh, dabbling and writing a little bit more. <laughs> um, but uh, corrections happen to all, all of us because we're this is part of the gig. We're human. Yeah. Uh, and we all uh, make some sort of uh, mistake along those lines. But yeah, no, but- I, it was just I, I was rem- remembering. Oh, yeah, there was. Wow, 2019 and 2020, uh, 2020 or 2020, 2019, 2020, and then 2021 were all the Trump impeachment mm-hmm. uh, sagas. Uh, so, and then Van Drew decided that he wanted to. But other other things, other things about this place, it, it, no one else can do what we do, and which is dive into the the roll call photo archive. I mean, there's like pictures from five different years of guys getting a moose out of a U-Haul truck. You know, I mean, it's just the the kinds of things that happen in Congress every year that our professional photography team finds new ways to make new, you know, like baseball games and things like that. You know, like this thing that we are covering today about the the people singing in the congressional record thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the first it, nail uh, ceremony, which, you know, the, at that event last night, the, the congressional uh, record event, a side conversation, I heard people sa- talking about the first nail ceremony, which is the first nail goes into the inauguration deck, you know, that on the East Front. And I was like, no, no one else, no one else, nowhere else on the planet is this conversation happening <laughs> except. Right. For and, and that's, you know, that's the thing that, that, that we do this place. It's, you know, like we use like what what happens with the CR and thing. we use these in acronyms all the time and, and we talk about, you know, the rule failed and we understand what the rule going down means in in everywhere else. It's like, well, it didn't happen, you know, right. but they are the, the, the you don't lose rule votes, you know, right. but they, they they found ways to lose rule found, votes, found ways to fail. <laughs> and it's, and it's, it's that kind of weird, you know, like the stuff that is. You know, it's our thing. You know, it's right. it's us and the people who read roll call, who who are you know waiting to get roll call and look through it and things like that. That that is that is an amazing thing to be part of. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned uh, you know that the, the the leadership name pack thing and the one the one example that that you had was like sort of perfect because I I had mm-hmm. Iowa people on my brain for different yeah. reasons. Yeah, no, I mean, like, well, well, leadership packs are these things that members can have in addition to their campaign committee, where it's supposed to be to support the leadership of your party. But it's really sort of, you know, you raise money to support other candidates because you might want to be the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee someday. So you make the biggest donations to the NRCC or the DCCC or whatever. But they come up with clever ways to name them. And the FEC has sort of been cracking down on... uh, names that are acronyms for the candidates names for that for reasons but like one of my favorites was marionette miller meeks in iowa's now second district but when she first won her her seat it was in a different number i can't remember what it was but she won by six votes so she named her leadership pack six pack you know (laughs) um and and that kind of thing i was and i have the story up over here like there's there's like Freedom Force and Residents First and Save America from Socialism are some of these names. But, you know, there's also just like weird things like Texas Red and Must Act to Create Excellence for Nancy Mace, right? I mean, they, they, they just... Pop, pop. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they do that stuff, you know. Make America Republican ne- yesterday was Mary Miller, you know. Uh, M-A-R-Y. Get it? Get it? Make America Republican yesterday. So, so they, they, they're just... Six you pack know, still wins because it actually shows a sense of humor. Uh, the yeah. others, eh. <laughs> they, they try. Yes. They try to have a, some creativity, and it's not just in bill names, you know. Um, yeah. Like what? What was like? What was that? one of the transportation omnibuses like safety Lou, and it was to get the congressman's wife's name in the name of the bill. Or yes. Like yeah. That. It was. Yeah. Uh, it was Don Young, uh, or you know, it, it was originally like it was something like Ice Tea, and then it became Safety Tea and Safety Lou, and it, yes, there, there was uh, an effort to get Don Young's, the late Don Young's uh, wife, in in there and her name in there, and that that I do kind of uh, appreciate, even though it's 
I don't know. I think I would guess that there's better ways to tell your spouse that uh, you're thinking of them. <laughs> but you know. I don't know if, if you're the T&I chairman and you're doing a highway bill, you've probably been away from your wife for quite a number of weeks. That you probably <laughs> wish you weren't. So this may be the one way to make it up to her. Uh, um, what else? There were a couple of things that uh, we, were, we were talking about, too. Just the I mean, you know, as you said, you were kind of a almost like a bureau of one for a long time as, as the Jersey correspondent for the Bergen County record. And, um, and then you came into this, you know, kind of, you know, you worked at Gannett USA today, which is a bigger operation footprint and then came to work for us. And it was, you know, expansive. Uh, and, and like, that was a, you know, you had a memory just of like different, like people, like arriving in droves at a scrum or something like that. Yeah. I mean, like, well, the team, the people who run around on the Hill, I was part of them sometimes, but more often than not, when everybody was over here, I was catching the Senator who was walking around them because I needed to ask a local question or I still remember there was like one vote where the entire press gallery is leaving and I'm going into the chamber because John Corzine is giving his final speech as a Senator, you know, <laughs> and, and they had finished whatever the vote was to save America from, you know, alien invasion or something like that. You know, um, and I mean, space aliens there. I don't mean, sorry. but, uh, but you know, it, I remember like during the Kevin McCarthy thing this year, um, loving lo- looking on like TV coverage and like Kevin McCarthy is doing a scrum and watching one of our reporters come around the bend like she's missing it and then stop cold because when the camera pulled back, there was another one of our reporters right there in front of him. So it was like, yeah, she didn't have to be there because she was there, you know, and it was just like because we were running all over, you know, they were running all over and they had a Slack channel for who's going where, you know, but sometimes you hear McCarthy's doing something outside. So huh? you're going over there, you know. Uh, and I, I love that, you know, you love to see the hustle that people put in to, you know, get that stuff here. And as an indication of, again, how quickly time moves, it was last year that all the McCarthy stuff happened. Way back, way back. It just, it just feels like this year. It feels like yesterday, but and maybe, maybe not to Mike Johnson, who has his job now. Maybe it feels like it's been a thousand years since he got the job of speaker from Kevin McCarthy. Uh, but for the rest That's of right. us- We, we know, are in the Vince Fong era, I forgot. Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> we're the Vince Fong, Bakersfield, uh, Bakersfield Sound. Well, he's era. running still, so, so it's not yes. it's not the same kind of George Helmy joke. Uh, yes. Um, and then uh, the I'd, I'd be remiss if not, not talking about your place at also at the press club. Uh, hmm. You're you're a member of the board of governors there. Um, I, do you get do they ever call you governor, Jackson? at all? No, they okay. do not. Okay. Uh, but as part of that, you are also like a, you know, in addition to helping run yeah. the club, uh, you also partake in a lot of its activities and the spelling bee. Let's talk a little bit about that because I'm relatively new to the spelling bee stuff. Uh, like, in, it, I mean, we've covered it at roll call for years, but in terms of actually going and attending, um, you, yeah, you I mean, it's, you're it's into it. Every- like, yeah, last year, I remember you, um, Don Beyer was like on the stage and I think you were heckling him. I would say, yeah, yes. Yeah. You're going down well, well, Beyer. You know, just, so. to, just to do the setting, it's the press versus the politicians. Right, right. right. And, it, and it, it was gone for many decades and it came back. And, you know, having covered the, the actual spelling bee with those poor preteen, you know, youths who are, are way smarter than I'll ever be going through emotional trauma. You know, like I remember covering covering that one year and this kid lost in the finals. And the first thing he told me and another reporter who were covering, he was from one of our, from our state, he apologized. And I was like, don't apologize, kid. Come on. You know? Uh, and, you know, but I mean, there you don't have beer, you know, right. with the press club, you know, spelling B you have, you have the audience drinking. Some of the people on the stage may have been drinking before they went out there. So it's a and rumor has it, yes. But you still have the same guy, Doctor Bailey, who works for Scripps Howard on the, the the National Spelling Bee, doing the announcing, and he's trying to fit his little jokes in there. It's it's a lot of fun, you know. But you know, so like he did one year, he did this category, you know, not safe for spelling bee, NSFB, spelling bee, whatever <laughs> category, you know. So it was like there were words like fartlek and wangdoodle, and you know. Shitta, you know, um, 
And it was just to make all these congressmen or reporters. And, you know, we should say that I've never been a contestant, but our colleague John Donnelly has. Yes. Uh, he, he gets up there and, 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 and takes it for a while. You know, I, I'm, of course, your wife was in last year, right? Uh, uh, yeah, last year, Kat Camilla, our, our former uh, editor-in-chief here at, at uh, Roll Call and CQ, yeah. was also a contestant. Uh, so, yeah. So yeah. the room you have, you have members of Congress bring their staffs who are like, Ooh, you know, uh, that kind of stuff. And But, I mean, it's, it's just a, a weird thing. You know, yeah. that, you know, and it's, there aren't whole, other than like the, the softball game where the women's softball game, where there, the press plays, the, the, there aren't a whole lot of things where we're in it with the people we cover. Yeah. And, you know, if you, you and I have talked before about the history of the press club on this podcast, but, you know, the club used to be that kind of setting where yeah. politicians and reporters would have a few after work, um, you know, and. It's not anymore. It's probably not. It's probably better for our business that we don't socialize with them all the time, I think. But it's better to see them not as alien things, right. you know, that, that they are human beings who, you know, can have fun too. Space aliens? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, although I will be going to a reception uh, at, the, at the Kennedy Caucus Room uh, later on tonight where we'll, <laughs> I'll be socializing <laughs> with members and their staffs. Uh, so, um, you know. Well, that I, will be a widely attended it, event that will be uh, operate under the rules of the House or yes. the Senate. You It'd know. be more fun at the press club, though, too, and be on our, be on our turf, uh, if if you yeah. will. And there's the secret room that you can go into if the if they raid the place. You know. Right. No, also, no we, we should just role. note for the record that I I, I know two of the words that you uh, the definitions for two of the words uh, fartlek is is like a running course that has like different kind of terrain just so you know you can tr you know train at elevation and flat surfaces and all this kind of stuff. Uh, also, it's just a hilarious word fartlek um and and wang doodle is kind of an imaginary creature uh so i don't know uh, they're in my story people can yeah. google it if they can yeah. spell the word <laughs> but but but, but shit i didn't know i i it's i had a probably, tree right yeah i I, th I think so yeah yeah some, some sort of tree so i i, I saw the, i ran across the story when i was preparing for this but I, I i had forgotten about some of those words but i i do you know there it's a fun event that you know and again it's it's in our circle, you know, it's, it's our readers. And, you know, when are you going to see a picture of Chris Pappas with a big number or in his name around his neck, like he's competing in the spelling, bee, you know, so he's, he's won twice, I think, Chris Pappas. I, th I think so. Yeah. Um, one year the, the, he, he owned, he used to own a bar and one of the year, the, the category was like types of liquor and things like that. So I think it was a fix. So. Yeah, he, yeah, he. I think his family, yeah, they own some like long-standing pub restaurant, you know, kind of thing in New Hampshire. He, he may even still be involved in it. I mean, it's uh, you know, talk about you know getting getting away from work for different work, you know, like leave leaving the family restaurant to go to the to to this to these digs. <laughs> well, that is one of the enduring questions of like why people will do this job, you know, what what. Uh, one of our colleagues and I were just was just we're just talking about this. Like people, why would people just spend their own money to get this job? I don't, you know. But I mean, the the I, th I think of the um, the scene in Chinatown uh, when John Houston, you know, uh, uh, Jack Nicholson's asking John Houston, like, why do you, why do you do what you do? Don't you have enough money and power? And Houston says, "The future, Mister Gitz. The future." Uh, maybe they. In other words, you don't want somebody else coming and taking away your money and power. There's that. Oh, well, hopefully. <laughs> um, well, Herb, this has been a blast. Uh, we'll, we'll figure out some way of getting you back, uh, perhaps on air, if 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 you'll have us. Um, but it's been great working with you, and uh, I will miss having you. Uh, you know, as a as a frequent guest, I will miss all of the. I, I've got. But, I guess we got to hire somebody with Jersey connections now too, because it just seems like we might be uh, light in that uh, in that mode right now in in the newsroom. So, uh, big shoes to fill, big Jersey, uh, New Jersey turnpike sized shoes uh, to just completely mangle a metaphor. Uh, but yeah, that's know. pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost redo about, that. Yeah, Ross Perotism. Or we're gonna run it back, and he's gonna say a new one. <laughs> 
nope, this is staying. This is what people tune in for. This is the gold. It's gold, Jerry, gold. <laughs> anyway, all the best to you, Herb, and we'll, uh, we'll see you another time. Adios. Adios.